Kyle Dake versus David Taylor, an epic showdown of two eventual world champions. Taylor was going for his second title in his third trip to the NCAA Finals. Either of these two could have gone to a different weight class and still won nationals, yet they both set their sights on the 165 pound bracket in 2013, neither budging. And so the story goes, were they both arrogant, headstrong, or just simply badass? Willing to put an NCAA title on the line to go down in history as being part of one of the coolest battles ever to take place in college wrestling. The fact that they wanted to see this play out on the big stage is a testament to their unwillingness to take the easy way out. It shows they are more interested in personal growth than titles, and that in itself speaks volumes. It's not for them, it's for the crowd. Sure, to the victor goes the spoils, but more importantly, events like this grow the sport. It displays selflessness in pursuit of something greater than just winning nationals. This was another important step in their journey to be the best in the world. And barely 15 seconds in, Taylor takes a low leg shot off of a lefty collar tie. Taylor is known for these low legs, as was Kale Sanderson, Taylor's longtime mentor. They're almost like ankle picks, though with an ankle pick you typically will throw your opponent away from you and to the mat. This is more like a low leg single from a collar. Dake's wide stance helps Taylor out with this. His collar tie pulls pressure downwards, which makes Dake's feet heavier and slower to react. Also notice how Taylor steps backwards a tiny bit, which forces a slight step forward out of Dake and gives way to that low ankle shot. Dake tries to run away and kick out of it, which proves to be silly. He probably got away with doing that against weaker opponents, but Taylor is able to hold on to the ankle, come up to a double, and score an easy takedown. When someone is on your leg, it's always best to fight, create a scramble, look for your own takedown. When you try to kick out like this, there's always a possibility your opponent has a good grip and you give up an easy takedown. You could also give up a stall call or a fleeing the mat call, either of which are good for your opponent and not for you. Taylor is up 2-0. 30 seconds in, Taylor has a leg in and Dake works his way up to a quad pot. Taylor's trying to break Dake down but isn't getting much from here. He would need to hook it under the forearm and lift it with both of his arms to get Dake to fall, but Dake gets up to his feet. He could also try to throw the second leg in and break him down forward, but he doesn't do that. Taylor hooks the far leg with the leg that was in, and this trips Dake back to the mat. An interesting little technique, an easy to miss detail. Taylor starts to pull Dake backwards into a crab ride, but his hips start to sag and get a little too low. Taylor also isn't doing a great job controlling both of Dake's legs. In a crab ride, you want to hook the inside of the calves of both of your opponent's legs to control them better and not let situations like this happen. Dake grabs Taylor's left leg and starts coming up with it. Taylor could reach with his right hand and grab his own leg, hop behind Dake and stay behind to keep control. That's almost like legal locked hands. It's super effective, but he doesn't do that. Taylor also has a tight waist, claw ride with his left arm. If he grabbed a half Nelson and started pulling back, he could have broken Dake down as well, before Dake grabbed his leg anyways. Dake continues to stand up with the leg and starts turning into Taylor, who wisely starts to bail to avoid incurring any more damage. Dake almost gets a cradle here, but he has the wrong grip on the leg, and also he runs out of bounds, so he settles for the escape. 2-1 Taylor. 40 seconds to go in the first, Dake is nice and low with a righty collar tie pulling pressure downwards. He switches to a lefty collar tie and gets a low leg single of his own with his right hand. He starts going out the back door, hooks Taylor's right leg with his left arm looking for a turk, which is when you hook the bottom leg with yours. This is a very good way of finishing when going out the back door. It limits the amount of scrambling your opponent can do. Taylor needed to trap the free arm when Dake went out the back door. I've seen Taylor do this before and it looks like he digs for it, but Dake's already in so deep and already hooks over top of that far leg, which kills Taylor's ability to tie him up here. There is a short opportunity to trap Dake's right arm, but he isn't able to find it. At this point, Taylor would be looking for fun, but Dake on his left hip, that's not available either. One last thing for Taylor to try is to bear crawl forward as hard as he can to try to kick away, which would be super awkward for Dake to hold on to and could give Taylor another scramble opportunity, but he doesn't do that. Dake maintains good position, keeps his head up, and continues digging for that turk. Notice him pull the leg back, which stretches that leg out, hurting Taylor's leg and making it even more difficult for Taylor to reach for anything productive. He then reaches around the hip, which secures the takedown. Dake also could have pushed that top leg forward, popped his head out, swam his arm out to the far side, looked for a cross face and a turk, but that does tend to be more difficult, so if you could finish the way Dake just did, you would want to do that. This is a textbook Turk finish, Dake is up 3-2. Dake chooses down in the second, is able to work his way up to a quad potting, and gets Taylor's right wrist control. Taylor tries to pull him to the right and break him down, but Dake posts the wrist and does a changeover. Looks to hook under Taylor's left leg, which would lead to a switch, or maybe just a high crotch, but settles for the escape. The changeover that Dake does is when he moves his hips away from Taylor as he hits the mat. This is a very important technique, it helps create space and is great for getting motion going. It also puts your opponent on the wrong side side for whatever he currently has, which at this point is just a weak tight waist. The only thing Taylor could have realistically done is drop to a leg as soon as he lost his claw ride, or maybe even before that. He could circle out front, try to finish a double, maybe get a turk, but in a situation like this, you have to go somewhere different. The longer you wait, the worse it gets. Dake is up 4-2. Second period then just kind of burns out. Taylor stalks and moves forward the whole time, has a shot attempt or two, but doesn't commit too hard, so doesn't get anything out of it. Dake makes no attempt to shoot. It mostly looks like they're both fine just going to the next period. Taylor takes down in the third, 
which is an interesting choice. If you're up in points, third period, your choice, it's a no-brainer. You take down. If you're down in points, the decision is more complicated. It's college, so you have a full two minutes to escape and get a takedown, but if you pick neutral, you might have a better chance. You give yourself a lot more time and energy, which would be a good thing here. Dake is such a good rider, he's not known for his turns, but I've seen him get five minutes of riding time against the best guys in the country without breaking a sweat. Taylor gets up to his feet multiple times, but doesn't get the escape until there's 20 seconds left in the match. Taylor stands up, Dake lifts him with an arm trap. I know this is a chaotic situation, and he probably didn't mean to do this, but this is a bad idea. If your opponent lands on that shoulder where the arm is trapped, it's called a slam, which is illegal. They get a point, not to mention they could seriously get hurt. If they get hurt on a penalty and they sit, you get disqualified. So that gets complicated as well. Taylor stretches his arm out of it. Dake slips off, giving up the escape. Dake does have a minute of riding time, but it's so close to the one minute mark that a takedown would probably eliminate it. He runs for the last 20 seconds. It gives up a second stall call, making the match four to four. But riding time gives Dake a point after the match is over. Dake wins five four. And so Dake goes down as one of the best college wrestlers of all time, beating David Taylor in his last hurrah, who ends up being a four-time finalist, two-time champion by the next year. Dake won four NCAA titles in four different weight classes, a feat that may never be repeated. Most wrestlers only really touch one or two weight classes throughout their college career. As for David Taylor, I give him a lot of credit for rising to this challenge. They've both known each other since they were little. It's only fitting they would meet in the NCAA finals and then years later be on the same team winning world titles together. It's honestly a beautiful story, not like many that we have in this great sport of wrestling. Not to mention, it's organic. It's not dramatized or forced. It's not Hollywood. Stories like this have the opportunity to grow the sport and they need to be talked about. It gives the matches more context, more emotion. The action is great if you know what you're looking at, but it's still complicated. The stories, however, are universal.